What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Swift Podcast. Today, I bring in two special guests, not one. It's kind of a change up for everyone. Um, so I bring in two of the most joyful, happiest couple I've ever met in my life. Every time I talk to them, I cannot get off the phone without a smile on my face. And I bring in Crystal and Eric. I've known Crystal for almost 10 years now and counting. I've met Eric for about two years. And the reason why I brought them on is I want their energy to be spread around the world. And you'll, you'll see it when you look at their content. You see it when you look at their pages. Um, just very happy individuals. And that's what I like. I like that. And we all know I like that. And that's what we're here for today. So Crystal, Eric, welcome to the show. How are you guys today? Wow. Thank you. That was so good. Oh my God. I'm speechless right now. <laughs> that's too kind. That's honestly. Thank you so much for having us. It's yeah. a joy to be here. The, the, the pleasure's mine. Um, big day, big weekend. So um, we're going to hit the ground running. So I texted Crystal what I wanted her to talk about and she'll lead the conversation. Cause I feel like you and I will just kind of choke up here. Like, Oh, we just suck. But no. the, first part, the, the, the first part, I think enlightenment of just the pandemic and the energy, right? So you guys have been going through a lot of process, but Crystal, I texted you saying love was underneath your eyes. And you didn't see it, and then you saw it, and then boom, a year later, you're married, and boom, a year later, you're moving out. I'm like, what the hell happened? I've just talked yeah. to you like, <laughs> so I was just as confused as everyone else is. So, Crystal, I have our friendship goes really way back to rider days. We've been friends for a long time. Um, and you know how you have those friends where they disappear for months, but when you talk to them, it's like they never disappeared. That's yeah. the friendship that we built. And I feel like I have a few good friends at a rider for that. So Crystal, the floor is yours. You let me know. Cause I, I need to, I need to know. And the people need to know because I think it's a sense of joy that is in your life. I've known you for almost 10 years. I haven't seen this much joy in those years until now. So I know Eric's a big part of it. Eric, don't blush now. You can blush later, but yeah, right. <laughs> we'll go from there. You're giving him a big head off the bat, but oh my God, I know, like you said, I don't know what happened. You're like, what's going on? That was the same feeling that we had the whole time because, so we met at work um, six years ago. More um, long? What, yeah, longer? Yeah, seven, I think. Now. See, now yeah. he needs to tell the story because I don't even know. Like, it was I got so, all of it was so quick. <laughs> yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's hear it. Yeah. Let's, so, he's like, you're done. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, no, no, he had no, your no. shot yeah. for sure. It's funny because you said you texted her, but then she learned to me and she's like, you have to tell the story. You got it all down. You got the whole beat. So, like, I, she was usually like, it's going to be her on the floor. I was like, I bet it'll get to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so here I am. I finished my first co-op at J and J, which is a six-month internship, and I am waiting to train the backfill. So who's going to take over the role for me for uh, moving forward? And then who comes around the corner was Crystal, and I said, Hi. "Oh God, please don't let it be her that I'm training." She's so she's the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my entire life, and I was immediately intimidated. I was like, "No," and she's like, "Hi, you're training me," and I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." So, <laughs> We had to spend the next week together. I got pulled back into the same corporate office uh, mm -hmm. immediately after. And then we were friends for five years, yeah. um, hanging out and going to different work functions together yeah. and seeing each other every day at the office. I always had a, a crush on her, <laughs> but I never thought that she would be interested in me until one day she got the nerve to ask me, is there something between us? I was, and I was like, like, what is yes, this? <laughs> absolutely, there is. And, and then, then we're like, oh, okay, we like see what's happening now. We're like, this is starting to make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Six months later, we were engaged. 11 months later, we were married and we've been married for going on three years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Time mm -hmm. is flying. I know. Flying. I turned my age when I got married. So that like just we're threw like, me through the whole loop. Yeah. I was like, wow, I'm yeah. not far away from it. <laughs> That's exciting. And the wedding was beautiful. I saw the pictures. Um, it was great. And uh, well, we're all well done, right? So Part of the reason why I want to share that story is just a sense of joy. Um, I think right now with the pandemic, what we were finding, what people looked at is like, oh, everyone's together, everyone's living life and everyone's loving life and so forth. And you always admire people that are doing it together. You always admire that. But for those of you who are stuck in this like timeline, pretty like I got to get married by tomorrow and this. Yeah. No, right? Like yeah. it happens when it happens, but true love finds its way to you somehow. And I know... Crystal's past more than I know Eric's past but I was like for Crystal I found her like that and it was underneath her eyes for almost what five years before something happened or three years yeah. before something happened like 
like damn um mm-hmm. it's I like remember a long to even just look at each other and be like to see ourselves in that different light and then from that point there was no turning back it's one of those things there's no planning it and I'm a planner I am so type a mm-hmm. I want to plan everything down to like this is what I'm doing in five years and there's no way that you can plan those types of things like you Absolutely just have not. to believe in it and let it happen no. I'm getting that question now. You're turning dirty. What's your plan? I said, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow morning. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. like, Get out of my face. So now I agree with you. I think planning is a key component of life, but like you just can't plan for that. Um, and that kind of leads us into the segue that we talked about is what the biggest thing none of us really planned for. In 2020, it woke us all up, and I think we're still in the mix of it. Um, and I think in 2020, for you guys, from what I saw, was the biggest growth as a couple and as a, and and what also was for the, the mental health of it. And I want to make that bigger topic of ours. I think you guys did it really well. Uh, a lot of couples were stuck in the house. Yeah. I was stuck alone with my teddy bears, but you know what? That's fine. We'll talk <laughs> later about that. But like you guys had games, you had this, you had that. And I think it's a big part that people neglected. Do we agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's something that even I think we neglected going into 2020 because we always like to explore and we like to get out and do new things. And even if it was locally, we always wanted to have these new experiences. And 2020 with the pandemic, we're like, wow, we're at home now. We're just stuck in here. But we still had that like fire inside of us. We still, so we live by this philosophy that every day can be adventure. And we were like, well, now we're home. How can we adventure? How is every day still going to be an adventure? And it challenged us to look inside ourselves and inside our apartment and inside our town and say, what else is here? What have we been missing? And how can we make the most of that? Absolutely. And I think a big part of that is continuing to focus on what was in front of us, which would be our relationship and just going deeper and just doing a lot of talking, Mm -hmm. I would say, and just like focusing on now that we're spending a lot of time together, not just coexisting, but like, working together to create a fun environment and Mm -hmm. to really enjoy our time together, not just be together because we're stuck. So that was a part of it as well. That's awesome. That's beautiful to hear. And just right there, viewers, within the first minute, this is why I brought these guys on. We have three lessons that two lessons they taught you. One lesson no one saw, but I saw. And if you're actually watching, you'll see it. Every time Crystal speaks, Eric's face is to her. And every time (laughs) Eric speaks, Crystal's face is that. Active (laughs) listening is a lesson. And I think that's what people forget. They forget to listen. Eric said focus was in front of you. And they showed you right there without even telling you the lesson is. And I think that's a key component to communication. And you do it well, right? If things are upset, if things things aren't happening, you're trying to put the teamwork and I like the phrase, every day is an adventure. Um, being in the PT world right now, the clinic, every day is an adventure. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it. So what are you guys doing? So, and uh, for those who don't know, Eric and Crystal do have a travel vlog. You look on their content. They went to some crazy places that are absolutely stunning. Um, Eric's photography skills are beyond my skills. They can never imagine. Like they're awesome. They look great. So definitely check that out. But of those places, so now you look at, you go to these extravagant islands and these places, now you're stuck in this house. It's a new house for you guys, so congratulations. What's your travel like? What's your what's your go-to? I know you, you posted about it, so now I wanna hear, I need details. So I'll, I'll lead on this yeah. one. It would be uh, really, and I think it ties in well with the everyday being an adventure aspect of what we try to do, but okay, we really try and find the stuff that is still safe and is still local. Um, I think that a lot of people or w- a lot of places get overlooked because they're so close to home. So with that sense of like looking at your own space and saying like, what is, what can, what can I create in terms of an adventure today? There is so much that's around in our own backyards that we can, if we focused on it and stopped worrying about what is far away and mm-hmm. like the big flashy <laughs> places, there's some really incredible places to experience that are right here. So that's, that's kind of what we focused on. And just wanted to highlight in terms of either small businesses or lesser known locations and just kind of provide a platform for like to show that there's these places that aren't too far away. There is. And there's the actual at home fun too. like being stuck inside is like being stuck inside your mind. And you're like, what do I come up with? What do I do? Well, 
we still, we work full-time jobs and we have our side businesses on the side of that. And so we still need to unplug and have fun. And it really forced us to get creative with, well, what can we do here? Is it home improvement projects? Is it just getting outside for a walk? Like, is it fitness that we're focusing on right now to try and still have that outlet and still find ways to like have that adventure and have that sense of fun and newness, even though we're in the same environment all the time. Is it hard? Yeah. It's hard to do sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah, well, duh. It oh, yeah. is. It, it, it is. It can't be understated because, you know, it just, it has, the pandemic has been going on for quite a long time. Yeah. And, you know, each, as it got worse, there were new challenges, mm-hmm. holidays, you know, different pressures. And, you know, it's been kind of, you know, a, a journey because you, you know, it, it's been going on for such a long time. But um, I think it's been really a great test and a great exercise to kind of really focus on, you know, how to be more mindful and more present and more Mm -hmm. appreciative about what is, you know, available to us, I think. Yeah. Instead of like focusing on what you want or, you know, what everyone says resolutions. Well, by the end of the year, I want to be at this place, going to this, doing this thing. And it's less about that. And it's more like, well, what am I getting out of this moment right now? Well, how can I be happier today? How can I be happier tomorrow? And making those small steps and focusing and just taking it like one thing at a time or one day at a time makes it so much easier than, okay, how do I change my entire life over the next year? It's like, just focus on what's right here. And I think that's part of the the aging process. As we get older, our big goals come into play and you want this and that. But I think we grew up in a faster time. Our, around us, people were growing pretty quick. Time was moving quickly. And then pandemic happened. Everyone hit the hard pause. But our generation, they're like, we don't know what to do. We're stuck <laughs> yeah. at home. I was furloughed and I was like, I don't know what to do right now. Like I'm supposed to be working. I'm, I'm supposed to have a job. I'm supposed to study. Yeah. I had nothing. I had no school, no work, no nothing. So it's like, I agree with you. It's, 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 it's in your mind more than anything. It's the mental game of your mind. Like, I don't know what to do today. What am I supposed to do? I can lay in bed all day. Mm-hmm. Um, and that'd be great too. You know, I'm resting, but is it what you truly believe in? And I think I agree. It's, it's, it's such a hard world to live right now because all we saw was what we want 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 but sometimes we don't need that like for you guys i feel like now you recently just started the minimalist challenge so you're getting rid of a lot of those wants of like what do we really need and there's a constant bicker between the two um i feel like i live in the house but i don't even live there i just know so much <laughs> about them so if it's creepy to you it's fine that's what good friends do we creep each other no, out so uh, so we want yeah right <laughs> it's so you know like that's what it's, we want to put that on display it's yes. not an easy thing to do <laughs> Dude, I thought about it this morning. I was looking through my, I was trying to find the right outfit to wear because obviously I match at times, right? But I was like, this drawer hasn't been open for like two years. These shirts lift my arm up. Oh, there's my belly button. Like I could throw those out, but I'm not doing that, right? <laughs> Why would I do that? That's more effort that I need to do. So, the bring back of the belly shirt. That's, yeah. the key. <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard crop yeah. tops are in. I can, I can rock it off. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I admire the games you guys have and I admire a lot of the fun, but I think that that's part of the reason why I reached out to you getting you on is the the wellness aspect. I think this all kind of falls into wellness in my category. For what Swift Podcast stands for, they mentioned two things. Eric in his conversation mentioned these guys go to travel to local shops, the unknown world, the unknown organization, the small ones that you never heard of. Mm-hmm. For me, part of the reason why I did this was to bring out people you don't know of, but they're in my life and they influence me, whether they believe it or not, whether they see it or not. So these guys for you guys are unknown. Like who are these two strangers to me? They're great friends. I'm like, yo, I texted Chris. I've never met a man so excited to clean in my entire yeah. life. And I said, come clean in my house because it was just yeah. so much energy, right? And that's what we're about. And that's what I truly admire about the, the entire thing, but it, it, it falls under wellness. And I know, Chris, that was a big topic that we discussed a while back. Um, so for my question to you guys is, what's your true definition of wellness? What do you believe as in, and you can have two different answers here, right? You don't have to be together and like show it up, but like what you believe to be wellness and what Eric believes to be wellness. Let's go. Let's see. Eric. All right. Put the time on the clock. We're going to compete. Best answer. Yeah. Wins. All right, best answer <laughs> wins. I'll give you 10 points added to the end of the week. Yeah. 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 I, I think we have similar definitions, but for me, wellness is, I mean, it's evolved over the years because I started my wellness journey, like on the physical side. And I thought wellness was just like, let's work out. Let's feel good. Let's be happy about the way I look. And then I ventured more into the mental wellness and it became more about, well, what makes me happy? 
What type of life do I want to live? And so overall, I think wellness for me has become this idea of living as close to my values as I can. And that takes a physical form, but it also takes the mental form. It is what's making me happy. Where do I want to be? And how do I become closer to that person that I want to be? And what's fun about that is that it's always changing. Like this year, you might have a certain goal, but five years from now, you're going to want to do something else. And so that wellness journey for me has been like this ever changing and kind of like self evolution effort mm-hmm. that I felt really connected to. I love it. That is a good answer, but oh, thanks. maybe not. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, wellness for me is a, developing the ability to approach your life with a sense of mindfulness and intentionality. I really think that it is a journey because uh, sometimes you just want to get by. Um, but developing the kind of the habits of looking at your life, being aware of the choices that you're making, the actions that you take every day, and then being more intentional with them so that you get to where you really want to go, I think is what I would consider to be wellness. And whether that be physically, when you're talking about what am I eating, what am I doing with my body in terms of am I working out or you know, taking that long walk today or whatever it is that would be fitness and then inside your mind and okay, what am I doing with my time? Am I reading? Am I studying? Am I, is it even something that I'm interested in truly? So what do, what do I, where do I want to be? And then identifying that and then how you're going to get to there through intentional action. Man, you guys go so deep with this stuff. I was going to say, well, this is eat right, be good, happy day. No, that, I know, right? <laughs> that, that, that was beautifully said. And I, again, and that's, that's the beauty of it is every definition of wellness should be different. Mm-hmm. Everyone has entitled a different belief. Um, Chris, so you said you were initially focused on physical wellness and went to mental wellness. Do you think the physical wellness that you were initially focusing on put a damper on your mental well-being of like not focusing on the mental side of it? Oh, so yeah. the reason why I ask and the, the reason why I'm putting her on the blast because I can because we're good friends like that. Yeah. But also for those of you listening, the key thing that you start to realize now is social media is such a high influx and, and such a influence on everyone. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times this physical image that you have to live by or have to get to is putting a damper on you mentally because you're not really focused on the wellness side. Yeah. I know plenty of clients that reach out and like, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds by tomorrow. I'm like, you weigh 110 pounds. What are you talking about? No, yeah. I refuse right. to coach you. Why? You're good. I don't want you to look like you're anorexic and dying on me. And I don't want you to be that way. Mm-hmm. Right? So not saying you're doing that, but like the, the physical side is what, what people so heavily focus on and they forget about the, the joyous side, the, yeah. the mental health of the, the smile on her face. I don't see that often on many people that are so stuck on wellness in terms of physically, right? So mm-hmm. what do you think? You're spot on. You are. And I know because I was there and I think you were even there. So for anyone listening, like Sakib, you were like the second person I think that I had coached me in my life. You set me up on macros and I was coming out of a different coach, someone that I had found online, you know, a fitness influencer with like the tiny waist and whatever, who was doing an hour of cardio a day. And I'm like, oh, this is what I have to do to like obtain that image of what I want to be. And you were like, how many carbs a day are you eating? You're not having any fat. Like we got to whip you into shape. Like, let's like, we got to put you on a third, like, and it it is so true. Like being so focused on the physical aspect at first, it definitely made me neglect the mental side because there's just like, there's not enough of the mental wellness when you're talking, like working out and getting fit. I think a lot of people don't see how much nutrition plays a role in your mental wellness as well. And like, if you're dropping those macros really low, or if you're like, if you're defining yourself and your value by how much time you spend on the Stairmaster, like you're not going to be happy in any other area of your life, no matter how happy you are with how you look. And I think I had to go through that a little bit to really figure out, okay, this is actually where I want to be and realize how I can tweak those things, like those tools, the macros, the cardio, the weights to create this more well-rounded life where I feel good, not only with how I look, but how I think and how I feel about myself. Spot 
on and I do agree. <laughs> I said, what is this girl doing? Every time yeah. she texts me, I think this is Eric before you were in her life. I'm pretty sure this is before Yeah, that. yeah. I'm like, well, but you probably know, I'm like, what is this? Why is this occurring? Let me tell you, I was, I was like, cause that was so beautiful. I was like, I gotta I let that rock. But <laughs> yeah, like, one of the very first things I remember from our friendship, like when we were in the office, I'd come up to her desk cause I'm like the guy that goes around like with my cup of coffee and I'm like, I spent a half hour in the morning saying hi. I would come up to her desk and she'd be like, ugh. I'm carb cycling and my carbs are so low. And I'm like, I don't know what any of this means, but you seem really up in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's like a, one of the very first Dude. I remember about early, early on, way back in the day. Is that she'd be like, oh, I haven't had enough carbs today. I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm cracking up. I'm actually in tears. That is so true. Dude, this I was there, right? Like when I competed, yeah. I was in that same realm. And it sucks. It really does. Because I agree with what Crystal says. Like when I was focused on bodybuilding competitions and physique competitions, I really didn't care about anything else but that. I didn't care about the being present, like Eric talked about, being focused on what the time is and really focusing on me to be happy. I was just doing it because I wanted to look a certain way. Yeah. And over the years, I'm like, you know what? If I go dad boss status and I'm happy, I don't care about it. <laughs> that's that's exactly. okay with me. But it's not going to happen because I think that plays a role in the hormones. And again, we won't go into the science of what happens when you're happier, but I'm pretty sure if you're watching us right now, you haven't stopped smiling the last 20 minutes. And if yeah. you have, something's wrong with you. And I'll talk to you <laughs> later about it, right? Reach out to me. Yeah. Um, and then, Eric, for you, so while this was a different definition, so what was your journey that led to that definition? I don't really know your journey well enough to, to know that, right? We've had a few conversations in the parks here and there, but talk to me. What was your, what led you to believing that's your definition of it? It hmm. was me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> influence on me. No, for real. Like you really helped a lot. She is exactly right. I, I will say that um, you know, for me, for a long time, I thought, well, if I change this thing about me, then I'm going to be happy finally. Mm -hmm. And I did this in a couple of different ways. I, I I did do. I changed my career. I took giant steps in my career, or I changed my career path, where I was an office worker, and I was like, I got to get out of the office that'll change everything. I became a field sales representative. And I was like, hmm, that didn't necessarily do it. Well, I will, you know, become, I'll, I will attain the physical physique that I've always looking, was always looking for. I got there. And I was like, all right, this is not exactly it either. And there, it's really kind of like trying those different things out and then realizing that, you know, there is something deeper to address. And it's just that awareness is where it started, I think. And, and then trying a couple of the different kind of, you know, half measures, I think, until finally addressing the, the kind of the thought process within of like, okay, I, I need to really kind of take a look and see what can I do on a deeper level to become, to, to be the happiest person that I could be, I think. So it was her. That's awesome. And I think, I think Eric gave us a, a good tip and a good lesson here about staying focused. Like his true, true weaning of wellness is staying focused to what truly gets you the end result for Eric. It wasn't the dollar amount. It wasn't being the richest man in the world. It was just his joy. And he goes for self-love, self-reflection, and confidence within and taking leaps of faith of, you know what? I hate this job. I'm going to go here. I hate this job. I'm going to go here. I'll go get in great shape. I'm still not happy. What's going on? What's happening? I think a lot of people forget those steps of just taking a step back, right? We just keep going, going. I'm a big victim of that at times too. I shouldn't say victim, but like, I don't do that. I know I have this vision. I need to be here by tomorrow. Let me get there. But then when I started stepping back and I recently started journaling and all this jazz, like who am I like fifth grade pen pal status right now, <laughs> but that's, that's my way of reflecting on like thoughts and mindsets of what's going on. And okay, I didn't get this. How do I come back from it? Where I go? Mm -hmm. So I acknowledge that. And I always respect people that always kind of bring that out saying I've tried multiple things. Cause it shows everyone that again, there should be no timeline. Yeah. There should be no timeline for in terms of our happiness because happiness should be endless and it should be coming throughout, but there should be bumps along the way. We're not mm -hmm. this glamorous. None of us have this glamorous lifestyle to live. None of us have this glamorous to us, but we have glamorous moments throughout. But it's what Eric says that we do well is we take care of the small things that we neglect because we rush the process mm -hmm. yeah. and rushing the process kind of hurts. I think Crystal, you and I talked about that when we first met about like the fitness journey of rushing the process of where you met with that woman. And I was like, what the hell is this girl doing to you? And can yeah. I get your money? I was like, can I get your money yeah. back for you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's where 
the reason why I started my, my podcast was to tell people what's really real out there. And you have a real life example of someone that went in the wrong hands, not necessarily saying it was a bad coach, but a bad lifestyle for her. Yeah. And I came in and I changed her lifestyle a little bit. And then she, she, she's doing well. She's been rocking. We had some bumps along the way. She did well with me. And now she's well on her own and she's in great hands. Um, and we can talk about the hip stuff if you want, but we might not go in there if I want to truly exploit that. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's always admirable to see that, but it just kind of shows us if we rush the process where we could be. All right. You know, it's so right to keep. And honestly, you were one of those first people to kind of slow me down too and make me realize that. So I think that's actually something, if I can say, you've always been phenomenal at as a coach oh. is making someone looking at their life and saying, well, what do you really want out of this? Because I think back then I was like, I don't know if I want to compete. I don't know if I want to do this. I, I just want to be like a little healthier. And you're like, all right, well, this is what we're going to do. I'm like, I want to get stronger. You're like, this is what we're going to do. And you were really awesome at just targeting like okay what do you want to get out of this and let's go and get you some realistic results because I think I was in my mind going through those bumps and I was like each turn was teaching me what I didn't want and I was still trying to figure out how to get there and you made that path a little easier appreciate that I think that's what you as coaches we have to do and I think you guys are in the same realm though I don't really compare you and us as two different people right three different people Eric you can't I promise <laughs> but yeah. you just merged the two the way I've seen everything but I think what when so for those of you who don't know their content check it out I, I urge you to check it out because I think you'll you'll find a sense of joy that we all find but you guys are coaching everyone on how to one get a healthier relationship mm -hmm. to how to build a relationship within a confined four walls and you're not traveling across the world to do it. Mm -hmm. But three is how to be creative with each other and how to be creative when one man's down and one person and, and, and vice versa that it, it comes down to companionship and it comes down to, as you met your best friend that helps you. Right. Yeah. And the overall, the biggest lesson, if you're, if you're really listening to this, is communication was on point with these guys at all times. <laughs> and and that's, that's a lesson in itself. It's a lesson of being focused in the moment and just being present for each other to heal that. And I truly respect and I truly admire that with you guys. Thank um, you. So with that being said, folks, I'm going to put Eric and Crystal right on blast real quick. So both of you have to give me three things like we talked about. And this year I said it was one of you. I changed my mind just because I said Yeah, it. I'm like, come on. <laughs> so basically, if I review the recap, we talked about the journey of mental health. We've talked about being focused, the true definition of wellness. We've mm -hmm. talked about the joy of companionship when you're in this pandemic. Um, we talked about a lot of things. So for me, what I truly admired about the entire conversation, there's been a smile on my face the entire time. They've been laughing, smiling. So we're going to talk about three things that keep someone to be happy. When things aren't really as shiny, like this halo light over me right now, when it's not there, there's a dark cloud, like that pandemic that hit, and you're like, all I got to do is close the blinds and go to bed. Yeah. So that's it. Your three things that tell someone they truly want happiness, what are we doing? Oh, boy. All right. Well, I, I do that often. Thing. I yeah, three separate things too. Okay. <laughs> and I do this often. I, I have people like one, 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 Yeah, you want to go back and forth. So I <laughs> yeah. have one right in the top of my mind. I think like the first thing, if anyone's like, I don't know where to start. It's a bad day. It's a bad year. It's whatever it is. Like the first thing that I want them to know is that like you have to figure out who you are. You have to, you have to know what you want. The second that you get clear about what you want everything else becomes so much easier and you become so much happier because you're not weighed down by like social pressures, the timeline, the job, the what I should be doing, what other people want for you. Like just take a step back, go within journal, you know, meditate, however it is that you do it. And just like ask yourself what you want and try and figure out what direction you're going in. And that's going to help you get closer to, the, to everything. Else. Absolutely. I was thinking about it from a like immediate action standpoint mm -hmm. of, all right, if I feel stuck, what do I like to do? And that's, uh, I think first and foremost is um, be grateful. Uh, gratitude is a tool um, for changing that mindset. So no matter how bad your day can be, you have your favorite mug, you have your favorite shirt, you have your favorite this, that, and the other thing. There are so many things that, you know, you can be grateful for right now. 
and so many reminders around you that if you're mm-hmm. if you do look right in front of you they they are sitting there and that is something that i've used to kind of get me out of the funk if i'm not having a, a great day if i'm feeling unwell just going back to those things that I have right now that can make me very happy. Gratitude is so big. That's <laughs> something that's gotten me through. So I had recently, for anyone listening, I recently had bilateral hip surgery. And for the past six weeks, I've pretty much just been like on the couch, not being able to do very much. And gratitude has really gotten me through that because for as much as, you know, we try and make the most out of every day when you're physically limited or you're mentally limited because you're in that space, like, just remembering where you are is okay and you're exactly where you're supposed to be and taking a look around and saying everything is actually pretty good that that really helps change the the frame of mind so i'm stealing yours but i'm adding to it oh, okay okay <laughs> <laughs> one plus add the journey of gratitude yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right then for my two would be uh like change of scenery whether it be getting some fresh air or going for a drive. I know we're all stuck within the house right mm-hmm. now, but you know, just getting out for a walk or I like to take drives. I like to see the scenery change around me. Mm-hmm. Um, that is really a fun way for me to get out of my own head. Like it's a, it kind of breaks because there's this new stimulus and I'm, I'm, you know, smelling the air and I'm like, you know, driving around and there's, there's so many things to look at and see. Um, to, to kind of break you out of whatever kind of cycle that you're in, in terms of uh, not feeling exactly on top of your game. So mm-hmm. I would say like a, a quick change of scenery in a safe way, whether it be a walk drive always helps me get right back, like break it up and, and get right back to it. Was that two? Did that was you two do, for me. You have two now and I have, I have two. two. Yeah. All right. My last one is don't take yourself so seriously. I mean, life can feel so heavy and everything, if you let it, can be really heavy. Um, but it's up to you. You get to change that. And I think actually that's the lesson that Eric taught me when he when we got together and he came into my life. He showed me not everything has to be so serious. You don't have to plan. You don't have to be regimented. You can have fun with even the things you don't want to do. And so if you're if you're in that space, it really helps like you're like, ah, I don't want to do this, or I'm having a bad day at work. Like, don't take it so seriously. It's okay. You're just human. Tomorrow's a new day. You can have a little fun. Go and give yourself the permission to, to go do something that you enjoy, and it feels better. For sure. And lastly, I would say create. So that's something that we mm-hmm. go to a lot. Um, Sakib, you mentioned journaling, writing mm-hmm. things down. Um, when uh, Crystal was feeling kind of down about her surgery, uh, I got some of these um, – make your own Christmas ornament at home kits. Yeah. We painted them and we had like a little fun time where we were listening to records and, and, and doing some sort of art is always, it, it, it's a really uplifting thing because you're, you're giving back and you're, you're creating something and you're yeah. using your mind and you know, whatever's bothering you kind of falls by the wayside. So like, that's something that if I ever I feel any type of way, going and hitting the grindstone a little bit, creating something gets you right out of it, I'd say. <laughs> that was beautiful. Crystal, Eric, I'm just in like, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know what to say after that. Typically I have a closing <laughs> remark, but uh, I'm left with like, I don't really want to close to this photo. I'll let them close it out. They take over the show, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was well said. I think those are great, great tips and great advices, but listening to their entire story for the last half hour, listening to everything they said to you guys from the get point and then the last six tips, one thing these guys do really well, and that's where I'm going to take my lesson from them, is focus on the simple things. They focused on that more than anything. They talked about changing scenes, actions, journaling. Crystal said who you are. All those things will remind us to take a step back and focus at what's in front of us and focus on the simple things. And when you look at the simple things, so the, the coffee mug, dude, I got mine right here. Yeah. I, love this. Yeah. I literally love this thing. And it was the best present I've gotten and I, until day. Like, if I, if I know that I'm having a cruddy day, give me a cup of coffee, I'm good to go. And I think that's the best lesson I gave you guys, aside from all the other wonderful lessons we've had in this podcast. And just, again, look at it look at body language, look at how they're talking to each other. And if you want to have great active communication skills and you want to be active listeners and really engage with the person that's in front of you, take notes. I've taken a few notes right here. Might be a lot, right? But 
But that's the beauty of it. And I think that's the biggest lesson that we can leave you guys off with this. If you're listening to us is take advantage of the simple things because they might be gone tomorrow. They not, and that's what the pandemic has shown us is not really appreciating, showing gratitude for the things that we've always had. You might not need anything. I'm pretty sure this is the last year I've really bought anything for myself. I feel like I had so much here, so much to do and taking things and creating things. I went to Home Depot and I bought like these little ornament things you make, you know, I'll do it myself. So I agree with yeah. you. Um, really well done. And I, I truly, truly appreciate you guys coming on today. Um, and I think the S in Swift should go to simple because that was the best list that we had. <laughs> keep it simple. Keep it, keep it beautiful. Keep it simple. And that's it. So Eric, Crystal, thank you guys for coming on today. And I hope to see you again soon. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having yes. us. What you're doing is amazing. Thank it you is. so much. It was mine. Thank you. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you on the Flip Podcast. From now, peace out. Bye. <laughs>